Austin Dillon stole the headlines on Sunday night, but Richmond was actually a really good race. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Before Austin Dillon went all NASCAR Heat 5 and decided to wreck everybody at the finish to ensure that he would, in fact, win the race, the race was actually really good up to that point. I would probably give it around like an 83 to an 85. This is one of the better Richmond races we've seen in quite some time. And a lot of that contributed to the fact that they had different tire options. You had the option in the primary tire, the hard and the soft, and the soft tire put on a really, really interesting show. At the start of the race, you had Denny Hamlin kind of shoot out to the lead in about two thirds of the way through stage one. Chris Rebell came and took that lead away because he was doing it for his crew chief, Adam. Make a hashtag, doing it for Adam or something along those lines. Blowing out both of your Patel attendants sounds like it would be absolutely miserable. But I guess when you're, I'm guessing he's probably in his 40s trying to do backflips off the diving board with your kid. Sometimes things get a little bit crazy. I still like to jump on a trampoline anytime I go over to my parents' house just to make sure that I'm still not too old to flip on a trampoline. And someday that might be my fate, but I'm willing to sacrifice for it to remain young at this point. But Fisher Bell goes on to win stage one. His 10th NASCAR Cup Series stage win of the year leads the series, and that is certainly going to help him out when it comes to the playoffs. Last year, during NASCAR's Full Speed documentary, he and his wife both said, we want to be back here next year at the championship race in Phoenix. And he's setting himself up to potentially make it back there, especially with how many points he's accumulated so far this season. Also in stage one, you had Bubba Wallace and Josh Berry putting on an absolute clinic on what good clean racing should look like. Something that, of course, was foreshadowing for the end of the race, which we'll get to in a little bit. But Josh and Bubba swapping positions back and forth. They gave each other the bumper a couple of times, but nothing egregious, typical short track racing. And it had to make Dale Jr. in the Cars Tour super proud at that. Then <laughs> you also had Chris Revelle putting Justin Haley a lap down. And Haley absolutely shipped him in the corner because I guess he wanted to feel what it would be like racing scene for the lead at that point. Bell did recover and went on to win the stage. And then at the start of stage two on the pit stop sequence, you had Christopher Bell absolutely run through Eric Jones like he was trying to make an NFL roster, spun Jones around, put him in his pit stop pit box rather at a 90 degree compared to where he should have been around. The team still was able to pit the car because he was inside the box. Minimal damage to the 20 car. At the start of stage two, Daniel Suarez went ahead and put on the option tire, the softer tire, and he absolutely flew through the field like he was driving a Joe Gibbs racing car again, but better this time. He went on to win stage two, an absolutely phenomenal call by his team to get him track position, to get him up through the field and then into a position to win that stage. Of course, he is locked into the playoffs because of his win earlier this year at Atlanta. Now he has a stage victory as well. It certainly is playoff points that help him out in the long run as we get closer and closer to the playoffs with three races to go. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Hat and shirt on today. Head over to drivensunglasses.com. Check out what they have on offer. Use code BREAKCARD for 20% off plus free shipping. I am very much a fan of the classic sunglasses as well as the camber sunglasses. These ones right here. So drivensunglasses.com. Josh Berry, SVG, myself. We all wear them. See if they have a pair that fits you today. And then in the stage break for stage two, you had Martin Truex Jr. kind of lose his mind. Whenever he gets to Richmond, back in the springtime, he lost his mind, ran into the five, ran into the 11, was not pleased. This time, under the under the caution break, he runs into the nine car. Chase Elliott was not happy with how he was racing him prior to the stage ending right there. And uh, maybe it's a good thing MTJ is not coming back to Richmond. Maybe, possibly. At least, probably not in the Cup Series. And then under that same stage break, you had Kyle Busch. And they tell you, don't run with scissors. That's hammered into your head ever since, like, kindergarten. And Kyle Busch said, fine, I won't run with scissors. I'll drive with them instead. And he's driving with scissors, trying to cut the wrap off of his wrist that he, he suffered at Indianapolis a few weeks ago when he sprained it. And honestly, he did a really good job. He didn't wreck into anything. I don't think you can say the same thing about like if Quinn Huff tried to do that, he probably would have totaled the car if you remember Quinn Huff. But for Kyle Busch, it's a pretty impressive feat for him to be able to do that. And then we get into the start of stage three. And Daniel Suarez, remember when he put on the option tire and flew through the field? Well, at the start of stage three, he decided to put on the primary tire and everybody else was on the option. And he sank faster than the Ocean Gate submarine. He looked absolutely terrible out there. He went from third on the restart down to 16th, which was the last car on the lead lap in the matter of like five laps. It was very, very clear which tire was better in that moment. And it wasn't the tire that Daniel Suarez Whereas was on. Martin Truex Jr. would go on to later in the race blow up because apparently Joe Gibbs racing engines from TRD are about as reliable as anything you buy from Timu at this point or the Chicago White Sox. You just don't want anything to do with either of them. And you 
probably don't want anything to do with a JGR engine right now because they have another engine failure coming off of the Brickyard 400 where uh, Ty Gibbs had an engine failure as well. Now they're headed to Michigan. And I don't know if you guys know this about Michigan, but it is a full throttle racetrack. It is high RPM, well, as high as they can get now. And you are constantly in the throttle. And if I had a TRD engine in my car heading into this weekend, I'd be like, oh, I'm not sure if we're going to make it through here. And then you had the story of the night. That would be Austin Dillon. He came through the field on tires and he looked massively impressive to the point where I was like, you know, on Top Gear, when James would put the stick in his car and have him set a fast lap and Jeremy and Richard are like, what's going on here? Something, something was amiss. That's exactly what it felt like on Sunday night. You're like, this is, is this Austin Dillon? And hey, I mean, statistically speaking, Richmond is his fourth best racetrack. Average finish is 16.7. Is that anything to write home about? No, absolutely not. You're not buying a postcard in Hawaii to be like, mom, did you guys hear about Austin Dillon's average finish? No, nobody, nobody cares. But for Austin, he drove through on merit, on speed. He was set to win this race and he was sailing off to victory. He was going to win absolutely going to win this race and then with two laps to go Ricky Stenhouse Jr. forgot that he was racing on an oval and realized that there are in fact corners coming up kind of just overshot turn one essentially is what happened there Ryan Priest at the same time forgot that he is not the only race car on track and the two of them happen to collide at that very moment. It's just how the space-time continuum was always going to work, and they ran into each other, bringing out a caution, setting up a green-white checker. Austin Dillon comes down pit road, puts tires on, and get, beats everybody off of pit road. I mean, he had a 10-car length lead coming onto pit road, so I would hope so, but he still managed to do that. Joey Logano second, leaped over Denny Hamlin. On the restart, Austin Dillon takes the inside, Joey Logano takes the outside. Logano clears him off of turn two cleanly, and he's driving away at this point. Then you come back around for the last Last lap, white flag lap, going into turn three. Austin Dillon, probably about three-ish car lengths behind, dives it down into the corner. And honestly, the more I watch the replay, the more I'm actually surprised that he was able to get to the bumper of the 22 with enough speed to wreck that race car. These cars are pretty pretty difficult to spin out, hitting them in the rear. You have to, have to hit them with some force. And I just didn't think that Austin was close enough to get that done. He spins out the 22 car, and at the same time, the 11's going underneath them. It looks like Denny Hamlin's going to sweep Richmond this year. And then Austin Dillon turns down. He does, in fact, turn down the racetrack. If the white line is here and Austin Dillon is here and then on corner exit, he's down here below the white line. That, in fact, means that he moved down the racetrack. And that's what happened there. Denny Hamlin follows the racing line off the corner. Austin Dillon hooks it down, hooks him in the right rear, turns him head onto the fence. And that was that. But up to that point, it was a really good race. That finish certainly tarnishes what was a good ra Richmond race at that point. It had almost 4,100 green flag passes, 26 lead changes, the most on-track lead changes that we've seen at Richmond, I think, ever, if I remember that statistic correctly. So yeah, Richmond was actually pretty good. It's likely going to lose a date next year. But from what we saw, I was pleasantly surprised, and especially with how good those tires work. NASCAR and Goodyear should absolutely bring that option tire to every short track that we have for the rest of the year, bring it to the road courses as well, give these guys some strategy, and it made for a really compelling race, barring the absolutely you know, ridiculous finish that we had there. So let me know in the comments what you thought about the entire race, what rating you would give it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter, as well as Facebook at Break Hard Blog.